With your Artistic Wire Deluxe Coiling Gizmo Kit, you are going to receive one U-bracket with the built-in mount. This is really great because this will mount to your table. You're also going to get five crank rods. And you can see that there is a really tiny one right here. This makes some really cool small coils and really beautiful tiny little wire beads. And then you have the next size, all the way up to this really thick rod, which is really cool for making jump rings. Now, in addition to these pieces, you are also going to get these wonderful step-by-step -step colored instructions on the back of your kit box. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to adhere your U-bracket to your table. And as you can see here, I have a pretty nice width of area. There's about three inches here. So this should accommodate just about any table that you are working on. So we're just going to slide that in, and then I'm going to secure it. You really want to make sure that this is nice and tight. And depending on the type of table that you're working on, you may want to cover that with a tablecloth. So the next step is to choose the crank rod size that you're going to want to work with, and I'll show you how to do that. Now before I choose the size of rod that I want to work with, I do want to point out that there are some tools that you will need to purchase separately. Your wire cutters, round nose pliers, and nylon jaw flat pliers will be essential when you are doing any type of wire working, especially when you're using the Artistic Wire Deluxe Coiling Gizmo. Now, as you can see, there are a variety of sizes, and we start down here with a very small coil. This is really fun, makes the most beautiful little beads, all the way up to this much larger coil, which is really great for making jump rings, especially when you want to color coordinate your piece. Now, I'm going to use the largest rod and then what I'm going to do is insert that rod into the top hole on my U bracket. The next thing is to choose my wire. And in this case, I am using 22 gauge artistic wire. This is where my nylon jaw pliers come in. I'm just going to remove that kink. Oh, I really enjoy working with these. Now again, this is a 22 gauge wire but you can certainly work with any wire gauge from 18 to 26. 26 would be much thinner, 18 would be much thicker. So what I do is I take the wire and as you can see, I'm working from the spool. I drop that spool in my lap. I take the wire and I wrap it around what I like to refer to as the upside down U shape of the handle on my rod. So that wire is nice and secure and the wire is towards me. I bring my hand up and with my thumb, this is the magic, I start to create my coil. Now as you can see, I really want to make sure that those coils are nice and tight together. And if they do spread apart a little, that's okay. You can just scooch them back together and then I'm just going to make this coil, oh, a couple inches long. Some people find it easier to bring the rod all the way up and then hold it like I am. It's really a matter of preference. But the end result is that you want a nice coil where the coils are really nice and tight and snug together. Now, you can use these coils just like they are for paper crafting. We have some really beautiful cards that have been made. You can use this coil alone and wrap it around a really beautiful bead for a pendant and a necklace. 
And depending on what you're making, that will depend upon how long you will make your coil. Typically, I like to make my coils about two to three inches long. And I do believe that we have a coil that's about, oh, let's just say two and a quarter. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and stop. And then what I'm going to do is unwrap that wire from the handle, slide the rod off, and then very carefully, I'm just going to remove the coil off of the rod, take my wire cutters, and right down here, I'm going to remove that from the spool, and there's my coil. And then up here, we'll just go ahead and trim that off, and then we have a beautiful coil that we can use, like I said, on our paper crafts, our cards, our scrapbooking. And remember how I mentioned you can use these for coordinating jump rings? Well, let me show you really quick how to do that because I really think that this is a fun technique. I'm just going to find, let's see if we can see that. We're just going to find the end of that cut. I can feel it with my finger now. Then I'm going to take my wire cutter and very carefully right there, oh my goodness, look at how cool. We have a jump ring. So now all of my projects, my bracelets, my necklaces, they're all going to have coordinating jump rings. This is probably one of my most favorite techniques. So I have the original coil that I made in step one. And as you can see, I loosened some of those coils to create a tail. Now the next step is to choose a second color and you want to make sure that you're using a gauge that is equal to the first coil or heavier. So in this case, I've got the 20 gauge wire. So this is a beautiful rose and I'm just going to take that first coil, insert it, and just let it drop. I'm then going to bring that back to the bracket and the rod that we started with. I'm going to wrap that wire around the handle like I showed you earlier and then I'm going to make a very short coil um, probably about a quarter of an inch or so about five times around then I take the original coil I slide that up and I also wrap that around the handle and what that does is it helps me to get the coil up and over the rod. So with my pincher and my thumb, I'm just going to guide that coil and you see how the coils are spreading. Oh, this is so much fun. And it's just a nice guide. I'm not really struggling with it. And then right here at the end, I'm going to finish that off with a coil that matches that first one. Again, about a quarter of an inch or so, five turns. So there's my bead. Then what I'm going to do is remove that and then I'm going to unwrap those pieces, slide it off the rod, bring in my wire cutters, nip that at the bottom, and then I need to clean up these little tails. Remember that when you are cutting, make sure to hold on to all of the pieces so none of them fly and we'll just go ahead and get that little guy right there. And at this point, this is where I would bring in my round nose pliers and I would just tuck those little guys in so that nothing rubs against my skin, especially if I'm going to use this bead as a piece for a bracelet or a necklace. 